<laughs> All right, guys, we're here at the premiere of The Death of Superman Lives, and I'm, I'm just wondering, was Superman uh, the character or the comic or even the movies, were the, was it a, any kind of inspiration in your lives and, and how you guys got into the field? Rob? Um, yeah, I mean, I grew up watching anything comic book related and reading comics as a kid, and Superman was definitely one of those that stood out big time for me. I'm more of an Iron Man guy. Okay, no, no problem. Because Superman's an alien that has so many powers and all that stuff, but Iron I definitely... Man. Chris, Wait, he does it with this hand, Iron Man. Yeah, yeah. see, there's <laughs> Iron Man right there. I know, seriously. Christopher Reeve, though, was my favorite Superman. That was that was Superman for me. I liked Archie and Dennis the Menace, personally. No, I was a Superman fan. Okay. I love Superman. And were you guys aware of uh, of Superman Lives when it was in pre-production? Were we aware? Well, absolutely, because Tim Burton called us to make a ridiculous uh, Superman costume. Well, tell us a little bit. <laughs> tell us a little bit about the uh, costume. Uh, well, well I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it. What, what happened was in, in those days, the early '90s. Nobody wanted to bank the, the, the you know the success of their movie on one company, and so okay. uh, Colleen Atwood, Oscar-winning right. wardrobe designer, came to us and she said, uh, "Look, I'm going to give you fifty thousand okay. dollars in three weeks to tell us what you think this should look like." And then she went to two other companies, and so basically it was a contest, gotcha. and we just kicked ass and we won the contest. So what uh, what were you given? What information were you given? Was it very uh, very minimal to go on this costume? It was beyond minimal. It was like go as crazy as you can. You know, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little senile. How many years ago was this? It's a long time it ago. It was. It was. Yeah, yeah. it was a long time ago. So uh, basically, uh, we were giving a given a little bit. Of, it's the whole thing. It's like when we finally released some of these photos and videos online, people went crazy because they actually assumed this was meant to be the red and blue Superman costume, but it wasn't right, right. at all. It was a healing device. He dies, he gets brought back to life by an alien. And it's in the Superman lore, right? right? So they educated us and they said, look, we don't care what you do, but we're not going to digitally augment it. Just do the coolest fucking thing you can. Sorry. <laughs> Beep. Yeah. So that's what we attempted to do. Excellent. Well, uh, can you talk just briefly about uh, what it was like when the film didn't move forward? Was that a, a big blow or was it the kind of thing where you're, it was just another job and you moved on to the next? Well, I mean... You know, uh, the same thing happened on Gail Hurd's The Hulk that I worked for six months on. Right. Built huge animatronics, and then I get a call from Jonathan Hensley, the director, her husband. says, And I'm like, hey, John, how you doing? He's like, I've been better. The film's off. Bam. Go do some oh, cocaine and get man. some hookers because it's time to celebrate. Uh, yeah, and then it happened on so many movies, Fantastic Four, it happened on Spider-Man 3, it happened on Where the Wild Thing. This is what, you know, the business of Hollywood sometimes is broken, so we'll spend millions of dollars developing stuff, and then somebody somewhere says, eh, let's move on to the next one. It was devastating, but the party afterwards was fun. And is it exciting that, that people are so interested that they uh, that they have something like a documentary coming out this far in the uh, in the pat or in the future? I get involved a lot with a lot of the um, fan cons and all that stuff, yeah. and I go to a lot of stuff. And it's amazing that the fan that's it's all about the fans. I mean, they keep this going and they keep this going, keep this going constantly. And now with social media, so. When Schnepp said, John Schnepp and Holly said they were yeah. going to do this, it was like, oh my God, there's probably people that would love this, and they're doing a great job. It's amazing what they're doing. What they're doing. It really is. Lifting the curtain, you know, for all of the fans to see that was, you know, closed for 25 years. Sure. It's a beautiful thing. I'm really excited to see this. I wish they would do it on more films like this, more not unmade films, you know. I definitely agree. Well, guys, I know there's a lot of other people that want to talk to you, so no, uh, you definitely... Line, wants to talk to you. <laughs> You're too kind. Uh, definitely enjoy the night, and uh, we can't wait to see your work. All right, cool. Thanks, man.